Hey, what is up, guys? My name is Daniel, and today I am here with uh, the best CPUs of the month for J I almost said January, July 2014. Um, I haven't done one of these in a few months, I think, maybe one or two. But um, today I'm also recording uh, the best GPUs of the month and CPUs of the month. Um, I don't know which one's actually going to go up first. So if you're seeing this video first, the best CPUs of the month, then I'll have two... You know, I'll have the GPs and cases a month coming up uh, later, probably the next two videos. So yeah, let's get right into this. For the first CPU, I went with the AMD FX 8350. Uh, it's a really good CPU. It's eight cores um, for gaming anyway, and really for everything. It's it's a great value while not getting into the range of like the 4770K or the 4930K in terms of price. Um, so it's good to go with this if you're just going to be doing moderate gaming. You know, it's not really going to bottleneck anything like a GTX. Even a 780 won't be bottlenecked by this, really. So, you know, you can um, make a build with, like, this and a 780 and still be fine. So, you know, that's that. It's 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 a really good value. Not much more I could say there. For the second CPU, the AMD A10 7850K. Um, this is one of my favorite APUs right now. AMD did just come out with... Um, I don't remember the exact name of the line of APUs, but they came out with their like extremely low end, like sub sixty dollar APUs recently. Um, but those really aren't meant for gaming; they're just meant for, you know, really really budget PCs. And as far as gaming goes, this is an insanely good value. It doesn't use all that much power. Uh, you can get with this, you can play games at 1080p at like very high settings and get playable FPS, which which is totally insane, you know, before, even with the 6800K or the 5800K, you really couldn't do that, it was mainly meant for, you know, higher end 720p, and maybe on some games, 1080p, lower medium settings, um, whereas with this, it's like, 1080p, medium, high, or very high, at 30 plus FPS, which is pretty insane, for not even having a graphics card, plus you can crossfire this, Later with, I believe it's like an R7 240 or an R7 250 um, to increase performance if you want to do that later, which is nice. So yeah, moving on to the third CPU, on the AMD Athlon X4 750K. Uh, this is a really, really good CPU, especially for uh, people on a budget if you don't want to use an APU. Um, you know, if you actually want to use a graphics card so that you have room to upgrade later, you know, like this with... Uh, an R9, is it? 260X or a 270X even, um, will work fine with this, and so, you know, for people who want to game on a budget on a PC, but not, um, go with an APU, just for the sake of upgradability, this is probably the way to go. It's an Athlon X4, so, you know, you may have to upgrade your motherboard if you want to go for, like, an 8350 or something like that. So, yeah, moving on to the fourth CPU on the Intel Core i7 4790K, which is the new um, Devil's Canyon CPU that came out uh, fairly recently. It's the replacement for the 4770K. It's Haswell. It has uh, better ability for overclocks. It comes overclocked. It comes stock at a base clock of 4 gigahertz, I believe it is, right out of the box, and it turbos to 4.4 gigahertz. So that's pretty nice. It is like $30 more than the 4770K, and the 4770K is like, I don't know, 400 megahertz less clock speed. So, eh, 4770K and this are kind of on par. I just figured I'd put it in the list because it's new. Um, you can go with the 4770K and overclock it, and this is also a moderately good value. Um, but, you know, you could buy this just to say you have a Devil's Canyon CPU and then even overclock this further if you wanted to, if you wanted to put like a an H100i or some sort of Noctua cooler, like an NHD15 or something, and overclock that, you definitely could. And for the last CPU, I'm with the Intel Core i7 4930K. Um, I like this CPU a lot, especially for, you know, workstation builds or builds in which you're using a much higher-end GPU, like uh, 295X2 or something like that, um, in which you need the higher core count, kind of. I mean, you could definitely get away with the 4790K, even with a, um, a 295X2. Uh, but, you know, for editing and things like that, where you do need the higher core count, but you don't want to step up to a Xeon, um, this is definitely the way to go. Because I feel like, 
there's there's two ways to step up from this CPU, and that is the you know 4960X or whatever extreme processor you want. Um, and the other way is just to go with a Xeon. But I feel like this, since it's X79, uh, although a lot of Xeons and uh, Extreme Series are too. But, you know, since it's X79, you do get all the X79 features. Um, it's just a great overall CPU for, um, you know, very high-end gaming. You know, $2,000 plus dollar rigs, I'd say. And for editing as well. For editing, this is really what I would go for since it's only like $500.00. And, um, you know, with Z with most Xeons and most uh, Extreme Series, you'll be paying anywhere from, you know, 700 plus dollars. So this is a really good value. Anyway, like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new here. I post content every other day. Thanks for watching and peace. Crypto, how do you promise safety for the month?